Oh my god, there are so many huge changes coming to Moonbreaker. Let's just move right to it. Okay, first up we have a post from Flaira, and Flaira mentions in this post that we are going to be removing the RNG in your bridge, removing the entire card draw aspect from the game. This means Reinforce is going away, and it's just going to completely change the way this game plays out. It's going to be way less CCG and more tabletop feeling. You bring your units and you'll always be able to deploy them. You don't have to worry about st stupid Reinforce RNG <laughs> that uh, has been plaguing the game, and I'm really excited for this change. Now, let's see, how exactly is this going to work? Flaira mentions later that uh, rosters are going down to 8 units, down from 10. We will start with all of those in our bridge, and the entire reinforce idea is gone. This is a monumental change to the game that completely... Like, we're going to be playing a different game when this patch launches late October, early November. This is just incredible. Okay, next up. We have an Astra nerf, and we knew this nerf was coming. Astra is simply way too powerful. It's crazy how many games I've played against an Astra player where like I have five units on the board and Astra has zero, and they just pull some weird, stupid shenanigans that wins them the game instantly. I'm just so happy um, to finally be getting an Astra nerf. Now, how does that new Astra work? So... Her new version has her creating Cinder Spheres, which gives Cinder when someone picks them up. I imagine this work working a little bit like crates. So the crates will drop within deploy range of Astra, perhaps randomly. And as the turns go by, they grow from one Cinder to two Cinder to three Cinder. And max three Cinder. And this sounds kind of interesting. I I'm curious how this will work out. This is a nice rework of Boost Morale, especially with the new bridge. I don't think boost morale would be very like great in the new bridge system. Like it would feel really wonky. You just with all the units in your bridge, all eight units in your roster in the bridge. I just don't see boost morale giving like the new feel that you would want. It would feel more CCG. So I'm glad boost morale is getting changed. That said, we ha we do still have into the breach, but into the breach will require her to be touching the units now. There is, an, there is the possibility here that Astra might be able to boost morale two units at once because there is that plural units. So I'm a little concerned about that. Astra into the breach already, in my opinion, it's just ugh, toxoid and uh, yeah. I, I'm not... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and see on this one. I am a little bit disappointed. I think Into the Breach is the main thing that makes Astra feel not fun to play against. So it, it's nice that she will have to be touching them. Perhaps she'll have to expose herself a little bit more to pull off these decisive Into the Breach plays. But we'll just see. have to see how it plays out. I'm uh, not sure. I'm, I'm lukewarm on this change. We'll have to see how these Singe Spheres work exactly. And... Yeah, if, if Into the Breach works with multiple units, it's just going to... Oh. Anyway, we'll see. Okay, next up, there were a ton of questions in the AMA about the season track. A lot of people feel the season track is way too slow. And Flaira says here that yes, there will be changes to perhaps XP gain in the October patch, and hopefully this will make it feel better. We don't know exactly how this is going to work. Player later mentions that they want to have it at about 180 to 200 hours of game time. So yeah, there's not too much else I'm going to say about that for now because we don't really know very much. Next up, we have a, another hint at a change. Look for a big change coming in our next patch. We are actively changing how units are unlocked. Now, that is intriguing. There, ha there was obviously a lot of criticism in the game in the first few days of release that 
sort of surrounded. Hey, I don't get all the units. I paid for the game. What the heck? Of course, you know, dig through the surface and yes, you unlock all the units in 30 minutes. But like, there's definitely a perception problem here because if you unlock the all units in 30 minutes anyway, like what's the point other than sort of getting players used to the idea that we have booster boxes and all this kind of stuff. So I am a little uncertain how this is going to play out, but I'm, you know, tentatively optimistic that this will be sort of a change for the better. We'll see. And next up, we get a post from Marier, who is going over all the things that are going to get changed. So let's start. Let's talk assists first. We have changes coming in to Orbital Strike, Cinder Infusion, Plink, and Stowaway. We also have adjustments to Corrosive Particles and Vortex Beam, which presumably are getting radius decreases. I know in the case of, uh, I'm pretty confident in the case of Corrosive Particles, Flayra previously mentioned that they'll be reducing its radius. Vortex Beam, I imagine they would also reduce its radius. Vortex Beam already quite a strong assist. And it would make sense to, to maybe tone it down a little bit. The amount of reach you get with Vortex Beam around obstacles is pretty incredible right now. So we'll see. Orbital Strike. They've mentioned previously some ideas for how this is the new Orbital Strike is going to work. Basically, the idea is if you put the Orbital Strike down, it's not going to go off until the following turn. This means that it makes it more positional. If you stay in this area or you're forced to stay in this area, you're going to take lots of damage. So I'm really, really hyped about that change. Right now, Orbital Strike is just ridiculous, especially with the corrosive particles. Like, if you get corrosive particles and, and Orbital Strike, it's just absolutely oppression. Okay, next up, Cinder Infusion. Not exactly sure how they're going to change this, but I know that they do want assists to move away less from, like, the no-brainer stuff and more towards this, like, I do I want to actually use this ability stuff? So we'll see how Cinder Infusion works. Maybe it'll work with this uh, Cinder, these uh, Cinder Spheres that Astro drops. Who knows? We'll see. Next up, we have Plink. Plink is another one of these no-brainer assists, and they, they are sort of stressing that they want to get rid of these no-brainer assists. Like, it's just obviously good to use this all the time, and there's no thought put into this. Plink falls in that category. I don't actually know how they're going to be changing Plink, but we'll find out. Stowaway, there were some ideas that they would change a unit in your bridge to a random unit not in your roster. And this sort of goes with the theme of, hey, you have this like random stowaway on your ship that you didn't know was there, but here they are. If that's what they do, I think that could be pretty, pretty cute. It's not a OP pick. It, it would definitely turn Stowaway into like not a great assist, but I'm totally fine with that because, uh, yeah, I mean, assists are so ridiculous. Like, There's so much RNG involved in assists. I'm, I'm glad if their overall power level is just way lower. So... And that, that could lead to some fun wild card situations if Stowaway just switched it to a random unit. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, next up, we have the units. And in addition to the Astra's change, which we've covered, there will be balance changes to Broken Vengeance, Switchback, Torian, De and Daytonia, as well as some balance changes to Accuracy and Crit. I'm curious. Uh, we, we don't know anything about these changes to Accuracy and Crit, or at least I don't. But Broken Vengeance. Well... Um, I'm not exactly sure what they're doing here. They've already made it so that Broken Vengeance does not retaliate against crew and uh, against uh, captains, rather. So I'm not exactly sure how they're going to tweak Broken Vengeance. I think he's actually in a pretty decent spot now. Switchback. Now, we have seen fewer people taking Switchback um, in tournaments and stuff. And the, the explanation there is that Switchback is, is indeed quite expensive at 5 Cinder. But uh, switchback, the ability, the ability to plop switchback down and then move him with fast and then switch it up and then basically assassinate any unit on the map. It can be, it can be an eight health unit dead in one hit if you have corrosive particles, for instance. Like it's, it's insane. So switchback, I don't know. Like, yeah, I, we don't know what the change is going to be. There's some 
spec my speculation my best guess would be that they will make it so that switch it up cannot be used after switchback has moved this means he can't move fast and then use switch it up i think that would be a reasonable change i don't know if that follows the design principles for the game but we'll see next up we have torian and torian is obviously incredibly strong and it was mentioned on discord or dev stream i can't remember where that torian may be getting minus one attack this would put torian at two attack and would make torian's main use be this sort of accuracy reducer and and still a, a modest two attack so this is a, a decent change torian right now is pretty much present in all rosters the three attack really makes torian just so worth it and having two attack i think is a reasonable change we'll see how it goes and daytonia here it's mentioned that this is not going to be a nerf this is going to be a buff so daytonia apparently is going to be getting a slight radius increase and this is probably a good change daytonia solid unit but a little bit lackluster for two cinder cost um yeah really nice to give daytonia a bit of a tweak up so i'm excited for that i'm really curious about what what mario means here with these changes to accuracy and crit i wonder if they will reduce the fall off or like the the, the fall off of accuracy or or if they'll maybe change the percent to crit or what i don't know we'll find out next up we have mario here mentioning that they plan to be releasing a new map with the update and this is awesome i do think this is going to be the cholak map that i talked about at the end of my every map explain video if you haven't watched that video here's the link check it out and yeah, I think this is going to be great. Um, I'm going to, it's just going to be nice to have a new map in the pool. Something else to, to explore the game with. So, yep. Next up, we have a change in the camera rotation. It is increasing from the current 20 degree limit up to 60 degrees, which should give us a lot more vis visibility around obstacles. This is a great change. They've mentioned before that they actually, they, they haven't really built the maps with like 360 degree rotation in mind because you will your camera will clip through buildings towards the top of a map or obstacles and so on so this uh, i i do hope that they get that re resolved eventually and we do get 360 degree rotation but in the meantime a lot of people have been asking for more rotation so this is yeah a great step in the right direction That's it, you guys. Let me know in the comments which of these changes is your favorite, which ones you're disappointed with, or hey, just if you want to chat, that'd be great. Remember, like and subscribe for more movie maker content. I will be back shortly. Well, I'm actually going to be away next week, but I'll be back after that for some more Moonbreaker action.